In this video, we'll use a hands-on code demo in Python to explore the relationship between infinity and identifying the slope of a curve. Just as integral accuracy improves as we approach an infinite-sided polygon, so what we saw in the preceding video, so too does differential accuracy improve as we approach a curve infinitely closely. So this allows us to apply this idea of the calculus of the infinitesimals to the differential branch of calculus, just as we saw previously how we can apply it to the integral branch. So we can use it to identify the area of a shape, uh, the area under a curve, just as we can use it in differential calculus to identify the slope of a curve. And as we approach a curve infinitely closely, so you know if we are looking far away at a curve like we are here, and we're trying to say, what is the slope at this point here? Well, by zooming in on that point, like I'm showing here, it kind of looks, the curve kind of looks like a straight line. And so it's not hard for us to estimate what a straight line would be, what, what a tangent line to this curve would be at this point when we see it as a straight line like this or an almost straight line like this. All right, so that's the idea of applying infinity, calculus of the infinitesimals, to identify the slope of a curve in differential calculus. We'll jump to a hands-on code demo now to see this very directly. All right, make your way to github.com slash John Chrome slash ML Foundations. In there, you will find the Jupyter Notebooks that we work through in all eight subjects of the course. We're currently in the third subject, Calculus 1 on Limits and Derivatives. So you can open up the notebook by, well, you can left-click or right-click. <laughs> I right-click to open it in a new tab. You can also access all of the notebooks in this series in the notebooks directory. All right, so in the Calculus 3 notebook, you are welcome to view this notebook statically. All of the code has already been executed. There's nothing missing. So yeah, you're welcome to do it that way. But my recommendation is to open up this notebook in Colab. Some people do, some students have reported having issues for some reason left-clicking on this open in Colab button, but it seems to always work that you can right-click and open in a new tab. That opens up the notebook in Google Colab, which allows us to interactively execute all of the code in this notebook. And so because the code has already been output for the purpose of viewing it statically in GitHub, let's jump up to this edit menu and clear all outputs which will give us a fresh uh, notebook so that we can be executing the code and getting the outputs as though it's the first time. And that's it, we're ready to go. We're starting off in the calculus of the infinitesimals section, which is in this first segment of the third subject called limits. And yeah, so we have a couple of imports. We have NumPy for working with numerical data and Matplotlib for making charts. You can trust me and run this notebook anyway. So we're going to plot over a particular range. And in order to do that, we're going to create a range of X values. So we're going to have a thousand X data points ranging from negative 10 up to positive 10. So we'll have a thousand values evenly spaced over that interval from negative 10 to positive 10. We use the NumPy linspace method to do that. And then using those x's, we can pass the x's into a function, which will give us a thousand outputs. And then we can use those thousand inputs x and those thousand outputs y and plot them out on a curve as so, using some relatively straightforward matplotlib syntax. So the reason why I chose this range of negative 10 to positive 10 is because I knew that that would be an interesting point in the curve. It's the point in the curve where it turns around, and so we get this nice chart here. And I chose 1,000 points because that gives us a pretty high level of resolution in the plot. You can see it's a nice smooth curve. 
the specifics around choosing negative 10 to positive 10 or a thousand data points, these are just you know approximate. You don't need to pick these exact values for any particular reason. I'm just using negative 10 to positive 10 to get a roughly nice region around where this curve turns around. And yeah, you know, a, a thousand to get a nice smooth looking curve. So there are no straight lines on the curve, as we can see. But if we zoom in infinitely closely, we observe curves that begin to approach lines. This enables us to find a slope, which we can call M, and a straight line slope at any given point, we call that the tangent. So we can find this tangent, this slope M, anywhere on the curve, including to identify where M equals zero, which is the exact point on this curve where it stops going down and it starts going up. So let's replot now, but instead of plotting the entire range from negative 10 to positive 10, here I'm setting the x limit to plot only from negative 2 to 0, <laughs> which is the same as uh, negative 0. And then I changed my y limits as well, just so that you know we're plotting a reasonable looking part of the plot. So I'm plotting from 0 to 2 on the y-axis. All right, so zooming in on this section from negative two to zero on the x-axis as we have here, well, <laughs> it doesn't look like a line yet. It definitely still looks like a curve. Let's zoom in a little more. So now let's zoom in further. Remember again, we're trying to find where the slope is equal to zero. So where the, the curve appears to be flat, where it stops coming down and starts going up. And from looking at this plot, well, I can see that's a round around here. So let's zoom in again on that midpoint from x equals negative 1.5 up to where x is equal to negative 0.5. So let's plot that out. Again, I'm adjusting my y limits to plot nicely. <laughs> so we don't have continue to have a huge y-axis or too small a y-axis. It's just about right. And so here where we're examining from negative 1.5 to 0.5, our curve is starting to look like it's flattening out. And we can zoom in even more. So let's zoom in even further to negative 1.1 to negative 0.9. And yeah, starting to look even flatter. And let's zoom in even more now, <laughs> a very close view from negative 1.1 to negative 0.99 on the x-axis. And yeah. So now it is starting to look like a straight line. And so this gives us a pretty clear sense that the point where the slope is equal to zero, where the line is perfectly horizontal, that's around this point here where x is equal to negative one. And as it happens, these are the exact plots that I showed you on the slides earlier. So we've gone from this wide view that gives us a nice view of the whole curve from negative 10 to positive 10 to this super close zoom in where the x range is only negative 1.01 to negative 0.99 and yeah pretty clear that this is the point where the curve is flat and it's turning around at around negative one so that hands-on code demo gave us a nice empirical evaluation of this idea that as we approach a curve infinitely closely, our differential accuracy improves. Our ability to identify the slope of the curve improves. Neat. So now we have a sense of what both branches of calculus, differential calculus and integral calculus, are all about. Well, so what? In the next video, we explore real-world applications of calculus, including to machine learning. To be sure not to miss the next video in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series.
And finally, you can follow me on Twitter too if that's your social medium of choice.